Okay, we're live. Good morning. I'm Judge Rosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for March the 9th, 2023. And uh, it is good to be here. I wasn't here yesterday. I had some stuff come up. Uh, and uh, you can keep me in prayer. Add me to your prayer list. And uh, just, just in general, we're all good. Everything's good. Just keep us in prayer. But I, I do believe in some ways, sometimes uh, the enemy does like to attack. Don't you think? Right? Okay, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, and and I guess <clears throat> this one was coming because um, this one's kind of the impetus a little bit that got me thinking about uh, meeting and praying in the morning. And I know I like to be here between sometime between 7 and 8, 7 and 8.30, but again, just things conspiring. Uh, God's not bound by time, right? And so he can intervene, and we're going to be praying for our young people. So. Our scripture today is going to be Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, and uh, that's the chapter, Armor of God chapter, but we're not talking about the armor of God, and um, and so uh, it's, it's, it's something else we don't necessarily follow up on enough <coughs> or give enough consideration to, uh, but, uh, but this is where we're going to be today. All right, I think uh, you've had time to look it up, Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 through 12. All right. I think I actually put uh, Ephesians 5, but we're going to be in Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. I'll change it here uh, when I'm done broadcasting. Okay. Picking it up at the 10th verse, Paul writing to the church in Ephesus says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I'm going to read that just one more time. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against uh, the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This nails what we've been praying about in terms of recognizing that we're in a two-theater war here. It's a spiritual battle, uh, spiritual warfare, but it takes place in two theaters. It takes place in our realm. And then Paul goes on to share here that, but our struggle is not necessarily against flesh and blood. Those are our fellow imagers of God. And there is this heavenly, this spiritual realm where the battle takes place. And the application here for the church, and I'll keep it brief, uh, the application here for the church is, is uh, we never quite go far enough in teaching and studying the Bible. And sometimes we need to extend beyond the flannel board. I think Nate Slaymaker, and I, I'm trying to remember, I think my guy Brad Williamson did, they did a couple of series with their young people and did a couple of things at some NYI events, youth events, where they did the whole story beyond the flannel board because when we were kids, they put the flannel board up and they teach you the lessons and it was all good, but there are some places we don't go with the flannel board, like uh, David and Goliath. We all know about David and the slingshot taking down Goliath, but we never really share with the kids or even in adulthood that David also took off the giant's head, right? As we get older, we, we, we come to recognize the church doesn't like to talk about Genesis, Genesis 6 because it's uncomfortable. Or Matthew 27, 51, because it doesn't come with a, a clear explanation or a clear answer. And we have a tendency to, uh, let's go talk about other stuff. Yeah, God is love. Let's go to those things. And when we talk about Ephesians 6, we love the armor of God, right? It's a rotational theme for every VBS since the dawn of time, or at least 1972, since I first went to, to church, right? Uh, but we don't talk about this armor of God in context. Um, and it's good. The armor of God is good, but verses 10 and 12, 10 through 12, tell us why we need that armor. And Paul says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against our brothers and sisters who might be liberal. It might not be against our brothers and sisters who vote a different way. It might be not, it's not against our brothers and sisters who, who live a different way. They are all created in the image of God and they are not our enemy. We can disagree with them, but they are not our enemy. All right? Everyone knows. I don't think it's a big shock. Everyone knows I'm very conservative in my values, but my progressive brothers, I might strongly disagree with them, but they are not my enemy. Okay? 
Um, that's not our battle. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world. The Greek in there is a word called uh, cosmocrator, cosmocrator, and, it, and it's an epithet to describe world ruler. Uh, it's a descriptive, and, and, and the idea here is, is what Paul is doing, he's describing Satan, okay? He's describing Satan as the world's ruler, cosmocrator, and, uh, and so that's who our battle is against. It's against the rulers and authorities and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is why we've been on this path of prayer. And when you start talking about rulers and authorities, it also indicates a bit of regional designation. Okay, and I, this goes all the way back to Deuteronomy 32, and we'll get into that some other day. But uh, there are regions, right? There are regions that, uh, that, that are under domain of spiritual entities, right? And you're thinking, well, there's only Satan and God. Well, there's God. And then you got to drop all the way down to Satan. And then there are other spiritual forces in rebellion against God, okay? Uh, they indicate regional designation in many ways. And I, I shared those stories when the Ark of the Covenant was stolen, take, taken by the Philistines in battle. I don't want to say stolen. Uh, and they put it in the temple of Dagon, their, their god. And uh, when the Ark of the Covenant was in there, the the... the the statue of Dagon fell over more than once to the point where the, the, the Philistines uh, marked off the area and said, this is God's, this is the God of Israel's turf. This is Yahweh's turf. That's uh, that's a sacred space for God. Uh, the, the story of, of Naaman, the Syrian general who, who gets healed from leprosy, right? And when he asks uh, Elisha if he can do anything for him, Elisha says no. And then he asks Elisha, can I take some dirt from Israel back with me to where I am in Syria because I have to go into a temple because of my king and I don't want to kneel on any other ground other than that which, that which belongs to Yahweh. And so so there was real a real concept here and the Bible speaks of it. There's space and there's regions that some, <coughs> well, there's Israel, which was under the control of Yahweh, and then these lesser gods, these lesser, lesser spiritual beings were in control of the other nations. So they came with rulers of, of, of regional designation. Um, the, the Greek word for rulers is arche, and it begins with, it means the first or the beginning, or principality, leader, someone in charge. Uh, the word power is exosia, uh, exosia, and it talks about authority and jurisdiction. And when you read when Paul talks about this, he doesn't say the ruler, the authority, and the power of those spiritual of the spiritual force. He says rulers, plural, right? He says authorities, plural. He says powers, plural. He says spiritual forces, plural. Okay, so he's not just talking, uh, you know, just okay. There's God, Jesus, Satan, and demons. No, there are spiritual authorities. That, that have power in places and uh, they have to be dislodged as God's kingdom advances. And that's what we come into contact with every day. And the problem with the church quite often is we don't want to acknowledge that we are coming into contact with these things. You know, God is love. Let's just do our good deeds as opposed to really praying not only for victory in this realm, but victory in the, in the spiritual realm. And you can't merely say that in this passage, that Paul is just talking about the Romans and the Jews or the Sadducees and the Pharisees, right? He's not just talking about them. Sorry, Hans, wrong guess, right? These forces of evil are in the world and in the heavenly realms. And that is why we pray and why we need to recognize two theaters of battle in the same war. Because both theaters influence, affect us, and affect us where we are and where we live. And where our young people are and where they live. It affects them as well. And that is why we pray for victory in the spiritual realms. We pray for battle and we pray for victory. We pray for violence done to those forces opposed to God. But that's not our battle. We've been called to a different theater. And the theater we're in is to recognize our battle is not against the flesh and blood. Those, like, those, uh, those created in the image of God, fellow imagers of God, going back to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. No, 
Our call is to redeem and to share and to spread hope to those brothers and sisters. No matter how much they may frustrate us, no matter how much they may despise us, uh, our call is to love them. And uh, it's not about them becoming nice and then us loving them. It's about loving them right where they're at to the best of our abilities. And of course, love, let's also define love again. Love doesn't always mean yes. Love has to be sincere. And that means when you're expressing love to people, you also have to be honest. And sometimes in the midst of that honesty, you have to say no. And I think we lose our way on that as well. So let's pray for our young people and the, and the people who serve God, who go in to difficult and hostile places, all right? Uh, let's continue to pray for revival. Uh, I got some folks out there, wow, at this late time. Thank you so much for clicking on. Let me know you're there. Say hi. Uh, and let's continue to pray for the revival, that thing that began in Asbury, that's spreading into different places. I've seen pictures in Nicaragua, Uganda, and uh, different places where there is revival happening. Let's continue to pray that there is an awakening here where we live, where everyone thinks it's impossible. We know nothing is impossible for God. Let's continue to pray for those who are suffering from cancer or for the treatments of cancer. Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, Rachel Gilbert, Colby Van Dyke, young man named Emmanuel who's in stage four cancer and he's only in his 30s and he's going through chemotherapy. Also, um, got an unspoken... I really don't want to go into it too much, but it's uh, it's an individual that's online, and uh, and uh, they they live online pretty much, and they lost some family, and uh, and so uh, if you could just say that family that lost their grandmother, can you be in prayer for them? You know, Lord bless them. I I, I can't even say their names, they're 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 very hush hush, but they've been watching and they're connected to us through Burbank Faith Virtual. Just think of somebody who's who've lost their grandmother recently and just, just throw up a prayer for names we won't know on this side of the river. Also, there's an unspoken that came through for a young woman named Mindy. She's connected to a lady that's part of our our, our group and uh, we have an unspoken for her and uh, we'll finish this week praying for her. Continue to pray for Yvonne Hildebrand who watches us online. It's part of our camps at Granite Ridge, the loss of her son. And uh, we'll continue to pray uh, for Dave Hart's sister and David and Linda Davies. Also pray for Vision Paradise. Our Spanish congregation pray for the right Armenian ministry to come in to Burbank Faith as uh, we are exploring that. And uh, I'm hoping to be back later today. Uh, again, some circumstances changed. I'm really happy to get on now. I wanted to be on earlier, but I'm hoping to do the sermonette later today. Talking about revival, UFOs, and deception. I just think that's kind of a weird title, but you deserve to hear about it. And, uh, and then, of course, we'll be in Joshua on Sunday. And projects, uh, the, the one that I've been sharing, and we, we, we talk about all of our other projects, the one that kind of we got hit with kind of hard was um, the steps, our back steps. We were thinking one price, the price doubled, and we're talking about a structural thing, and we're looking at about 5000 that we have to, uh, we have to uh, uh, raise for that, and uh, I, I, I would just ask you to pray. I'm not asking you to give necessarily, I'm just asking you to pray that those funds can come in and uh, if you pray for us because it does extend our burden a little bit uh we we are blessed we operate in the black but those little things as you know when you run your household when those things unexpectedly come up and your transmission drops out it does change the it does change the counting that you have to do okay uh let's pray and uh i'll get you guys out of here lord we do thank you for loving us lord we, we just pray for all the needs lord lord we pray for our young people as they are on campuses, and we pray, Lord, that you would uh, just bless them, Lord, encourage them, strengthen them, and that you would protect them, God. Uh, those voices, Lord, of flesh and blood, of fellow imagers of you, Lord, uh, Lord, let their voices be tamped down if they're speaking evil, Lord. Let their voices be tamped down if they're speaking untruth. Let their voices uh, lose their platform and their authority if they're, if they're speaking anything that diminishes the work of your son, Lord. Uh, we don't we don't want to bring them shame. We don't want to bring them harm, Lord, but we pray that your Holy Spirit will bring conviction to them. And in the spiritual realms, Lord, lay waste to them, Lord. We pray, lay waste to them, and uh, so they lose their influence uh, in our realm. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we always have in you. And Lord, we pray for those that are sick. Uh, Lord, we pray again for, we, we pray for revival, Lord. We pray for those dealing with cancer, Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, Rachel Gilbert, Colby Van Dyke, 
Emmanuel and his chemotherapy, uh, Mindy and her unspoken, Yvonne Hildebrand, the Hearts and the Davies. Pray for Vision Paradise, the new ministry we're hoping to start, the Armenian ministry we're hoping to start, as well, Lord, as uh, all of our services and our gathering times. Lord, uh, just be with Burbank Faith Brick and Mortar and Burbank Faith Virtual. And Lord, uh, just give us guidance and wisdom and, uh, and peace of mind as we uh, deal with our back steps, Lord. Uh, give us direction on that. Lord, we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you for sticking with me. 15 minutes on the nose. Awesome sauce. If you're there, leave us a note. If not, I'll talk to you soon. Hit like, like, like. Share, share, share. And God bless. We will talk to you soon.